Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm dealing with something completely different. I'm not very happy if I'm honest with you. So everything's been fine. Been out and about a couple of times this summer. I've seen the Loch Ness Monster twice. I went to take the dog out to the vets the other day and the dual mass flywheel started to vibrate and shudder and I'm not very happy. So instead of doing what every sensible other human being on this planet would have done and um, put it into a garage and just stuck his hand in his pocket, I decided to get the gearbox off myself. Let me show you where I am so far. Now I thought this was going to be a bit too much for me to film and do at the same time, so this is why it's in bits now. But in hindsight, I thought I would share. So the first thing I did, crack the wheel nuts off, because otherwise you're going to struggle when it's up on the jacks. Jack it up in the air, get it as safe as you can. I've got all sorts wedged under there. Should be all right, could probably be better. Then your first job, crack the bottom ball joint off. You might want to give everything a little zap up with WD-40 first of all. Give that a whack either side. Need to then undo the drop link on this side. That will cause that bottom ball joint to pop out. I've left the track rod in connected. It would be nice to undo this hub nut and knock that CV joint out, take the shaft right the way out, but I just haven't got a socket that's big enough for that, so I'm just gonna have to make do. Same on this side, bottom ball joint popped out. On this side, I'll take the track rod end out and I've undone the drop link there, as you can see. The next job was this inner CV joint carrier, two 13mm bolts, which allows this little bearing which is attached to the inner CV joint to pop out of that carrier then you can slip the drive shaft out of the gearbox on that side Ugh. same with this side here this drive shaft just slipped out and I'll move this one round out of the way when I go to drop the gearbox out again it would be nice to undo the hub nut and take that drive shaft right out but I just haven't got a socket that's big enough for that next job is this rear gearbox mount which fits into this subframe it's got this big bolt going through it which is like one of the tightest things in the world that thing sits up there and bolts onto the back of the gearbox with these three bolts here Take that out of the way, get it out of, get it out of the equation. We've got the rear gearbox mounting out of the way, we've got the drive shafts pulled. All we're left now with is pipes and wires and bellows in bolts. Um, top mount on the gearbox and we should be off. That's it, and I'll pop that back in the hole for safekeeping because I'm not putting this back together instantly. Maybe up to a week while I wait for the parts to arrive because I'm going to check part numbers. Oh, it's gone all noisy, there's a helicopter. The little brackets, the old wires, push them out of the way. That's where it starts to get a little bit tricky around the top of the gearbox area. Right, that's me moved out of the way. Let's get the clutch slave off next. One out, two out. Put them safely and then move this clutch slave out of the way if you spend any time up in the cab do not press the clutch pedal when that slave cylinder is off of that arm because um you'll be in trouble otherwise all the guts will probably pop out from inside of it Crack it off at the top there the two hardest bolts or three hardest bolts at the top around the front and i'll go around the back and get the other two which are in a similar position but around the rear right next we've got i don't know if you can see them two 13 mils Going from the engine end of the, the block casting through into the gearbox. Get them cracked off next. The top there, I've got the two upper rear bolts undone, but I've left them in place, just pulled them back in the holes um, to make putting back together a little bit easier. But that's all the hard ones done now. It's just the lower ones. Get the engine and that supported. Get it loosened off. Pull the gearbox off. Next off, a little bracket and undo it from the pipes that bolt on on the front of it i'm hoping this is going to give me enough clearance it looks a little bit tight that's it remove that got a jack underneath the end of the engine i've got all the bolts cracked off i've got the hard ones out up the front and the back the gearbox is now loose from the engine i'm just going to remove the last few bolts leave myself with two easy ones to get out by hand and then it's up under the bonnet so next job undo the top mount here and the other strap that is on top of it undo all them let it rest on the jack lower the jack gearbox off So there's the top mount, almost undone. Just 
Mount. Top gearbox mount, out. Right, now I've remembered to undo the gear change cables out of their little fault carriers. This gearbox should come off. It's nearly off anyway, if I'm honest. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, baby. Overalls. And that is it, she's out. <sighs> On gearbox, removed. Hallelujah, putting it back in ain't gonna be no fun. I think there's gonna be an episode three. So let's get this clutch off and see if I can see any part numbers. I didn't order the clutch because I was under the impression that she was a dual mass flywheel. But it looks to me, I mean, I'm no expert in clutches, but it looks to me like it's a single mass with the spring with the sprung friction plate so i'm glad i didn't go weighing out for a dual mass flywheel now i think i'm not sure yet let's have a little look oh your old arms are getting a bit tired now get some numbers call it a day for today twiddle twiddle look i've cut myself now and all i see the extent of what's going on see how much it's going to cost me for new bits Wedge up, as you know with doing these things, as soon as it becomes a bit dark, you stop being able to find anything, it becomes a real pain. Come on, come off. Let's have a look, single mass flywheel. Oh my god, I don't believe it. I could have sworn it would have been a dual mass on there. Brilliant news from my point of view, because we just need another clutch. So, happy days. Yeah. Oh, that pleases me greatly. Just saved myself buying and returning a dual mass flywheel. Right, part numbers off of clutch. Get clutch bolt. See you next time. Thanks for watching.